This tutorial is sponsored by Patreon. Thank you all for your support. Hello everyone, in today's tutorial we will be creating a FPS counter, but uh, we are also gonna add uh, the option to turn it on and turn it off. For example, I'll create a simple options menu with only FPS and we're gonna turn it on and off. I had the request on this tutorial, so let's make it. So right now I'm in third person template. So let's go ahead and quickly uh, create uh, the master UI. So this is gonna be the UI that is gonna represent everything on screen. Um, just right click user interface widget blueprint. Okay, so here um, I'm gonna go to designer and I'm gonna create canvas panel so we can uh, put things uh, align it better. And the first thing is going to be text, and this is going to represent my FPS. We can put it in the top corner, like that, and create binding. So, if we want to show the FPS, we need to create a binding of an integer that's going to represent our FPS. And call this variable FPS. So, why integer is because I like integer, but if you want decimal numbers, you can also set float, of course. So, get FPS and just return it like this or you can just format text type fps curly brackets fps so it shows fps before the number as you can see that would uh, look like i need to add it first to the third person blueprint so on the begin play when the game starts i would just create a widget it's gonna be master UI and I'm gonna add it to viewport as well. Okay, so now if we press play, as you can see, it says FPS, then the number, but the number is still not showing, and that's because we need to go to the event graph. And from the event tick, I wanna get delay. So this is how often you want your FPS to update. I will put it like 0 0.5, and here we're gonna get. Uh, uh, delta time and we're gonna divide the delta time so make sure you connect it to the bottom one and we divide it by one and that's basically gonna be our fps and from here you're gonna pull it here you're gonna get this node to transfer the float to integer but if you're using float you're not gonna get this node okay so if you press play now it should be working as you can see it's showing the fps but it's a little bit slow, let's put it 0 0.2 and as you can see now it's updating it much faster, okay so now we need to make um, we need to uh, make it so we can hide and show our FPS so let's go ahead and uh, make this FPS counter a variable so we can access it and let's um, create another UI this is gonna be our let's say options UI you can have this in main menu as well options UI I'm gonna add canvas panel here as well and I'm just gonna add some image or border in the background Put to zero, 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 and make it dark. Just like some options menu, let's say. So now, um, to my canvas panel, I will add text, and I can put it wherever I want. I'm gonna put it to the middle, like that. Zero, zero, and then there is a trick: alignment zero point five, zero point five and call it options menu okay so now like you would do with every options menu I'm gonna add vertical box but I'm gonna add it to the canvas panel so this is vertical box you can even put it to the middle align 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 
here I'm gonna add first horizontal box for my FPS. So inside of it, I'm gonna have text inside of my horizontal box, and then I will have a check box. Perfect. So now uh, this is gonna be show FPS counter. And this box is uh, gonna be of padding 50, 100, so it's not instantly like uh, exit. Uh, if you want to adjust the uh, size, you can just pu put like 40, 40, let's say, and then you just copy this. This is how I do it, and then you can shift left click, shift left click on every image size, shift left click. So just hold shift and left click here and you're gonna basically apply the size to every box because there is more boxes we'll apply to this one okay that's it uh, now we need to uh, add something inside of our game instance so i like to add this to the game instance because when you change this option it's gonna stay through all of the levels without you needing to save so i do it like this i create a game instance let's call it yotto game instance just for a sake of tutorial and then we need to change our project settings to be there so under the project settings maps and modes you change it to your instance and inside of this instance, I'm gonna create a variable that's gonna be called show FPS. And by default, it's gonna be off. <coughs> okay, and now this is gonna be show FPS checkbox. So because we created this, we will need to cut in the game instance, we will need to cast to it now. So from here, I'm gonna cast to game instance, YouTube game instance. Uh, from the object, I'm gonna get game instance. And as YouTube uh, game instance, I'm gonna promote it to variable and leave it like that. So now we can control the variable inside of the game instance because we cast it. So on the checkbox, we can scroll down and on check state changed. We can actually get our game instance and uh, uh, hold B and then left click to get a branch. And here, <coughs> condition is is checked. So if it is checked, we're gonna set show FPS to true, right? Because the box is checked to show it. And if we don't want to show it, <coughs> so if it's not checked, we're gonna set show FPS to false, like that. But <coughs> if um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> if we turn off the FPS, <coughs> we need to hide it from the screen as well, right? So default visibility, it's gonna be uh, collapsed. And uh, when we show FPS, we also want to create a widget here, which is gonna be our master UI. And why are we creating this widget is because we want to get this variable inside of the master UI. So when we create a widget, we can just promote it to variable and call it master UI reference. And because we did that, now we can simply access this FPS counter text block. So I can get FPS counter and simply set its visibility here set visibility if we show fps then it's going to be visible we can copy it so just control c and control v or control d if you want to duplicate and here if we don't want to see it so we hide fps then we set it to collapse again okay so now we have to add a way for our player to access the options menu and that's simply going to be p key because we cannot use end key in our uh, editor since it's gonna close our editor. Uh, 
Oops, a picky. Let's find the picky here. So when we press the picky, uh, I'm also gonna create simple variable options menu open. So when we press picky, we're gonna create a widget, and it's gonna be options menu. We're gonna add it to viewport as well. And uh, we're gonna set options menu open. So we're gonna. So basically, we are creating a widget, adding it to our viewport. Um, then um, we are um, setting the variable to be open because here it's gonna be branch, and the condition is option menu open. So if the options menu is open, then um, we are gonna hide it and if it's not open we are gonna add it so this is going into the false node and up we're just gonna remove from parent okay we need uh, like that or you can just uh, promote this to get a reference and then yeah let's just do it like this it's gonna be easier for you to understand um like that like that we can disconnect this like that okay this is going to be called options ui ref so this options ui ref can just go into here now be just much more cleaner uh, okay but when we open the widget we need to get our player controller so we can show our mouse cursor here so set show mouse cursor put it to true and set input and game UI like that so we are going to be showing our mouse cursor and also input game and UI and here we're going to do the same but we're going to set show mouse cursor we're going to hide it when we don't want to be in the options menu anymore and set input game only like this So what you could do here to make it a little bit more cleaner. Oh, also, don't forget to set the variable that it's closed. If we want to make it a little bit cleaner, we can uh, collapse it to function. But let, let's just leave it like this, so you can see. Uh, and uh, let's try it. So if I press P, show FPS counter, press P again. It doesn't work, okay. Uh, why is that? Let me see. So when we press it, we checked, should be visible. Let's see. What we could do also here is um, check for its visibility. That's actually even better. So inside of the FPS counter, we can go to visibility and bind the visibility. And here we can check the show FPS from the game instance. So we will need to cast to the game instance here. Cast to game instance, YouTube game instance. Get player character. No, no, get game instance, sorry. And as YouTube game instance, just promote to variable. And now if we get that game instance, uh, get show FPS, we're gonna create a branch, so hold B and left click. So if the show FPS is true, we want to set it to visible, if not, we want to set it to collapsed. And now let's just uh, 
head over to options UI and just delete this. I think this one is way better. Yeah, as you can see, now it works. But since we are uh, removing from parent the options UI, uh, uh, it's deleting uh, because we don't have save system, right? It doesn't save it. So when we remove it from parent and we add it to viewport again, it's going to be like this. But how we can bridge this without having save system right now is um, just getting options UI like this and set visibility to be collapsed like this and now if you press P oh it's still uh, okay so basically yeah so the problem is uh, you need to get uh, your UI, UI to save it so you need to save system but um, that comes later but this this work it works basic basically like that so this should be working uh, when we press P we press uh, we tick it and we see our FPS but when we come again and untick it because now if we press P and then we leave it like this nothing's gonna happen because it's not updating so when we do this it's gonna so basically you need to get it to save it so the widget saves itself when next time you open it but for now it works like this you tick it and you have it so this is good from the main menu you can simply make this from the main menu and game instance and it's gonna save it for the all the levels so if i figure out how to save the widget uh, i'll post a part two but for now uh, I've been asked to, to do this and this is basically how you would do it from the main menu. So thank you guys from, for the watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.